In this series of videos, I'll be explaining what time signatures are and how they work. In this video, part four, I'll be explaining the following irregular time signatures, and I'll be demonstrating how to calculate missing time signatures from a passage of music. In part two, I discussed how to calculate whether a time signature was simple or compound, and whether it was duple, triple, or quadruple. It's not quite that straightforward with irregular time signatures. Let's have a look at 5-8 to start with. As you're watching this video, which is part four of the series of videos, you should now be able to look at this time signature and immediately be able to identify that it means five quaver beats per bar. However, how many pulses are there in each bar? Well, there's actually two, but they are not the same in length. A bar in 5-8 can either be a crotchet pulse followed by a dotted crotchet or the other way around. Whichever way around they are placed, the bar will still equal five quavers. But because the crotchet can be split into two equal parts, which would indicate simple time, and the dotted crotchet into three equal parts, normally compound time, it's absolutely impossible to state whether the time signature is compound or simple. It's for this reason that this type of time signature is called irregular, or sometimes it's called uneven or asymmetrical. Each bar contains both simple and compound divisions of the pulse. Staying with 5-8 for the moment, it's important to note that the pulse is either crotchet, then dotted crotchet, or the other way around. It can never be quaver, crotchet, crotchet, or any other combination of these notes, even though each of these examples equals five quavers per bar. Even in irregular time signatures, there will always be a pulse, and each pulse must split into a combination of twos and threes. The lone quaver is not allowed as a result. Even though 5-8 is an irregular time signature, and therefore not simple or compound, is it duple, triple, or quadruple? Well, it's actually none of them. Now, you might ask, why is it not duple, as there are two pulses in 5-8? Well, it's because each pulse is not equal, calling 5-8 duple would suggest two equal beats. It is therefore a quintuple time signature, quintuple meaning five. I'll add this name to the time signatures at the top of the screen. Let's look at another quintuple time signature, 5-4, which has five crotchet beats per bar. I've always found 5-4 a strangely satisfying time signature, and two famous pieces of music that spring to mind, which use 5-4 very effectively, are Mars from the Planets by Holst, and the theme tune to the original series of Mission Impossible, not the film version with Tom Cruise, as that moves into 4-4 after about a minute. Now, I can't show or play the music here for copyright reasons, but do look them up on YouTube and listen and feel to the unusual beat of five crotchets per bar. Like 5-8, there are two pulses in 5-4, either a minim and a dotted minim per bar, or vice versa. As the pulse does not split neatly into equal groups of two or three, it cannot be simple or compound, thus making it an irregular time signature. As I said earlier, the five beats also means that it is a quintuple time signature. The other type of irregular time signature you're likely to come across are septuple time signatures an irregular time signature with seven beats. The most common are seven, eight, and seven, four, seven quaver beats and seven crotchet beats in each bar respectively. There can be three pulses in seven, eight, and they are a combination of two groups of two quavers and one group of three. The groups can appear in any order such as these and can even change between bars. If the two groups of quavers appear next to each other, they can even be beamed together like the first four or the last four quavers in a bar of 4-4. Four, four. This does change the pulse to just two per bar. Very occasionally, you might see this instead of 7-8. It actually means the same as 7-8 as 2 plus 2 plus 3 equals 7. But it is clearly telling the musician that each bar has three pulses divided into two quavers, two quavers, and then three quavers. You won't be asked about this if you're sitting an associated board music theory exam, but it's worth knowing as this type of time signature does pop up every now and again. Finally, 7-4 has the pulse divided up into minim, minim, dotted minim, or like 7-8, any order of these pulses. Before we finish, let's have a quick look at a typical question you might come across in a music theory exam. Your job is to select the correct time signature. 
The first thing to notice is that bar 1 starts with a group of 3 quavers. Bar 2 ends with 2 groups of 2 quavers. As there is a mix of groupings of 2s and 3s, we're clearly dealing with an irregular time signature. If we count it in crotchets, so assuming that the time signature has a 4 at the bottom, bar 1 has a value of 3 and a half. Therefore, we're clearly not supposed to be dealing and counting in crotchets, because remember the top number has to be a whole number. Let's try quavers, so an 8 at the bottom of our time signature. There are 3 quavers at the very start of the bar. The next two crotchets both contain 2 quavers each. Therefore, there are 7 quavers in the bar. We've already deduced that the answer to this question will be an irregular time signature. Therefore, we pop the 7 at the top of our time signature. Our answer is 7-8. I do hope that this video and the entire series of videos on time signatures has been useful to you. I'll be uploading some new videos very soon, so please do keep watching.